Welcome to the Global Missions Podcast, a show for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes. You can also engage with us through Twitter and Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And now, here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to many friends as Mags. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to visit a topic that we hope will be helpful to both church leaders and mission committee members, exploring the value of a church vision trip. I don't want to reveal too much about the interview with Simon, but I will say that these trips are usually short in length, but quite different from many short-term ministries that many churches are engaging in. I think this conversation will stir some good ideas and perhaps help you decide if a vision trip might be right for your church. Let's go now to today's conversation. Our guest today on the program is Simon Marable. Simon and his family now live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where he is serving with SIM Canada for the last five years or so. And Simon loves partnering with churches to see how they can grow and flourish in understanding world missions. He's lived in and traveled to many countries over the years and enjoys experiencing new cultures. Simon, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's really blessed to be here. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Our topic generally is about vision trips. Just before we get to that, Simon, please just take a moment, introduce yourself, and tell us about your current role at SIM Canada. As you mentioned, my name is Simon Marable. My main role is church partnership mobilizer. So it's connecting with the churches to see how we can encourage them to be part of missions in uh, different countries as well as here in Canada. Very good. Well, today our topic is right in Simon's expertise. We're going to talk about vision trips. Simon, some of our audience may be familiar with vision trips, but maybe not everyone. So let's begin with this simple question. How are we defining a vision trip? Good question. The way we look at vision trips is actually a trip to explore the opportunities of coming alongside different missionaries overseas and partner missionaries overseas as well to see how we can resonate together and build together. Mm. So there's a an element of introduction? Yes, introducing the church element of leadership this side to be able to connect with the leaders and the development of the missions overseas. Yeah, Mm -hmm. And this might be perhaps a mission work that the church is already familiar with, or perhaps maybe something totally new? Yes. What I would have been encouraging is if a church has been supporting a particular missionary overseas, that they do connect with them and find out what's happening on the field and not just waiting for them to come back on a home assignment. And then Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. it's introducing new opportunities to the pastors and missionaries. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it would be a learning experience for both the senders from the church environment here sending, I shouldn't say here, but in a home nation, but also a learning experience, hopefully for the on-field personnel as well. Yes, I would would say that's that's true. um, My main sort of feeling on this whole vision trip stuff is actually the most important thing is you're going there to learn mm-hmm. and to listen. You're not going there to solve a situation. You're not going there to solve a problem. You're not going to go there and be able to give them the advice that they need. You're going to be able to, first of all, so important to build a relational connection with these, with whoever you're working with overseas, be a national or even a missionary themselves out of your church or some other place that you have built a relationship with them before you can even consider inputting into particular people's lives. Sounds wise and gracious and patient, maybe patient process for some who want to arrive with answers. Very much so. It's very interesting when you have different environments, different people from different settings and backgrounds coming together. And they actually, people from here are very much, could you say, in a big pond rather than their little pond. And they're seeing all kinds of elements that they've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. So it's actually walking them through these areas, helping them to understand the ministry. It's a very good introduction and a foundation for us to build on now. Let's talk about who might consider going on a vision trip. In your mind, are there ideal candidates for a vision trip? Yes, there are. The ideal candidates for vision trips are the pastors, 
the leaders of the church, the mission committee uh, leaders as well, those are the people we need to get the, onto the vision trips. A vision trip is a very intense time. Mm-hmm. It's where you are going to be going, landing on the ground for 10 days, and uh, you'll be learning every part of the ministry that you're wanting to be part of as well. The leadership of the church know the DNA of their church. Mm-hmm. So they would be able to pick up, this is a ministry that I could really, the church could really come alongside, or thanks, but no thanks. Maybe try something else. The other big element of this uh, this whole partnership, as I was saying, with the, with the leadership and, mm-hmm. and going over to the field, and that is, it's great. We, we take people over there, and I've taken a many, many church leaders over to visit particular ministries, and on a debrief, I've said to them, this is, some, which is just something you would like to be part of, and they've generally all said yes. So I said, well, that's fine, but now, now we have to speak to the partners on the field and find out if they resonate with you. Mm-hmm. And it's quite interesting the reaction you get when you've taken people over there. They're sort of, their mouths drop a little bit, suddenly realizing, well, this is a partnership we're talking about, so we need to find out from the other. Mm-hmm. Half, if they would uh, resonate with you, so mm-hmm. yeah, it's not a it's not a one way conversation. It's a two way uh, engagement. Then, very much so. It has to be very much that way. Otherwise, the relationship will never grow, and mm-hmm. you won't be able to build build into each other's lives. So it's a, it's an openness. It's a frankness. It's an understanding what God is calling them to do to come alongside the particular min- missionaries or ministries they're they're looking at uh, overseas. So is it fair to say, then, Simon, from your point of view, that a vision trip is not just a one-time event, but it's actually the beginning of something, or potentially the beginning of something, we should say, right? You're you're deciding if it's the beginning. Yes, it's very much a long-term relationship that we're looking for. We're looking for a deep connection between the church and the people and the ministry and the nationals overseas or the particular missionary that you're working with. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's very much it's a very much an ongoing scenario where they would continue to to meet, connect. What I've been doing with the relationships I've had building with the different ministries overseas is I've come back and everybody's agreed that they want to be partnering together. So then we have sort of put together a, like a three year commitment between the two sides. And then uh, with assessing that commitment every year to see how it would, uh, how it can grow. Okay. So you're suggesting then that should this partnership be developed, that it's actually articulated in some type of mutually agreed upon document and that there is a regular review of that partnership as it proceeds forward. I do. Definitely. <clears throat> it holds both sides accountable. Mm. It also requires more awareness of what is going on. There's a lot more communication between the the, the two parties and and prayer being the most important one is is the one that's really sort of come to the fore when you're getting the church to pray for those particular ministries overseas, yes. Mm -hmm. If we're going to develop a a ministry partnership like this, and if it's going to be long-term or of any significant length, there's going to be a lot of listening and a lot of learning going on. Would you agree? Yes, very much so. There's a it's an awful lot of understanding the different cultures where you are, also of different elements. Just one quick story to start of interest, I found, was that we were actually in visiting a, a village in, uh, in Ghana with, with a group of people, group of pastors and, and team. And we went on the Sunday to this beautiful church, which hadn't been finished. You know, there was a beautiful building, which was just thatched roof, and they just started to start to, to build the walls on either side, which was taking some time. So our leaders over there said to the pastor, what are you looking for? What do you need? You know, what, what is your main issue here when people can't come? And the pastor said, well, it's because of the rain. The rain comes, and when it's raining, it, it, it comes into the church. And so what we're doing now is we're building the walls. So in all good intentions, we say, well, what are you needing? What do you need for that, for the walls? So the, the pastor gave an amount that they're looking for. And of course, it was sort of, well, we can help you with that. And everybody was excited about that, which you would be, you know. Mm-hmm. Only to understand when we went back again, about three or four months later, that each member of the congregation had committed to tithe one bag of cement 
towards that wall to be built. We'd taken that away from them. We'd walked in there and we'd taken that away. We'd taken that option for them to really be part of what God's telling them to do and bless them. So we have to be so aware mm-hmm. of where we're stepping, where we're going. It's just one, one story. Yeah. So uh, just to kind of review that, those were the best of intentions. They were honorable intentions, but a lack of full understanding sort of shortchanged the church there into responding in their own obedience to the Lord's call on them to participate in it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We've just got to be so aware of that as, we, as we're traveling, as we're learning. And you're only going to learn that through relationship and partnerships as you get to, to know one another. The other important part of the partnership building would be we do deputations as well, where the nationals would come over and spend a month over here and go from different churches, but they, they would spend four or five days with the particular churches, not just sort of pitching up on a Sunday, but arriving maybe on the Thursday, spending time with the missions committee, the pastors, being part of the staff. And then by the time the Sunday comes, they're not sort of strangers. They're part of uh, part of the community. Sure. So it's an introduction to the supporting or the sending community then? Yes, absolutely. Ongoing. Well, this is uh, this great discussion. I want to mention here another episode of the podcast, actually. Uh, for those that are familiar, this is the third season of this podcast. But back in the first season, we had an episode entitled Doing Cross-Cultural Partnerships Well. That was an interview with Mary Letterleitner, and she shares a lot of really helpful insights into avoiding cross-cultural mistakes or learning from other cross-cultural mistakes that have been made already. I would encourage you to go back and look through that if you think it would be helpful. If you are engaging cross-culturally, you can avoid some of the misunderstandings perhaps. In a moment, Simon's going to talk about some of the potential benefits of vision trips, both for the churches who send their people on a trip and the ministry partners who receive them. But just before we get to that, we're going to take a minute here and share about the organization that Simon serves with. SIM Canada is convinced that no one should live and die without hearing God's good news. We believe that He has called us to make disciples in communities where He is least known. Use your skills, share the gospel, and make disciples. Check out www.sim.ca to learn more. And now, back to today's conversation. Okay, we're back with Simon Marable talking about vision trips. Now, Simon believes that a vision trip is not just a one-time event, but it is the part of a potential long-term partnership. So, Simon, let's talk about some of the benefits of a vision trip for churches who send their people onto those vision trips. What are some of the benefits for churches who send their own people? Okay, the benefits for the churches are the incredible relationships. Again, I know I harp on that word a lot, but the relationship is so important to any any ministry and any sort of follow-up and help with one another and, and understanding of one another. I believe that uh, by sending out the leadership as well as individuals who, are, who would be required on the field by request from the field asking for expertise in certain areas that we can fulfill those obligations to them, knowing that that's what they're asking for and that we could follow through on that. And also, I think one of the biggest areas of benefit would be, and I'd like to challenge the the pastors and the leadership of majority of the churches here, and that is we need to really look back at the Paul and Barnabas scenario where the church leaders and elders saw in the congregation, for example, Paul and Barnabas, we know that God is calling you and we want to send you out. We need the pastors to look at, through their congregation, they know who God is calling and to step beside them, bring them alongside. And as they come alongside and uh, taken on a trip like a vision trip to experience this sort of area that we pray that they would consider going into full-time ministry and mission. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's a good point. And with great respect, we do want to encourage pastors to engage in this. Here, I'll mention another episode from earlier on, and I don't even know the number. We can put it in the show notes. But we had an interview in season three with Paul Seeger, who authored a book called Senders, How Your Church Can Identify, Train, and Deploy Mission Workers. 
And it's a great study, easy read book for a pastor to consider how they can lift that intentionality, I might say, in a church and watch for potential missionaries. Now, Simon, I want to ask about a barrier that I see here. You know, we talk about doing these trips and how important it is in relationship, but they can cost a lot of money, right? Like, are they really worth it? Are they necessary that we should spend that money? I get asked that question quite a few times. I, I, without a doubt, I would say definitely. I'm not saying necessary for ourselves, but I'm saying for the people on the ground. I know with the nationals and the missionaries that we're walking alongside, to know that the team that I brought over have committed to come and walk with them and to hold their hand and to pray with them and to see what they're doing and to encourage them and to come alongside far outweighs, to me, any cost of what Mm. you could do. You are then Mm. going to bring that back, the experience, you're going to bring that back and you are going to be an advocate for God, I believe, because the Lord's going to open up incredible areas that you've never even dreamed about, but also be able to come and be an advocate for that missionary and ministry. So I think it's vital. So we see it rather as an investment. It is a cost and it can be costly, but we're hearing you say that from your experience, it's a good investment. Let's look to the other side of this partnership or potential partnership. What are some of the benefits of a vision trip to the receiver, to those mission workers or those national sisters and brothers who would receive a vision trip? Well, it's like like I just sort of mentioned now, the, the encouragement to the national believers overseas, knowing that there are brothers and sisters here who are supporting them and praying for them. I mean, An example is one example I have for that, and that is we have a a very strong partnership in in Ethiopia. The the main feedback that I got from the past, from the the leader over there, was when he came over here on a deputation, and that was I now see where the other half of my ministry is because Mm. of the, the prayers and the people on this side who have connected with him. So he suddenly sort of woke, not woke up, but he suddenly realized, you know, it's not just my ministry over there. I've got everybody over here who I'm partnering with in the churches praying for me. And uh, I, can, I can come alongside them and ask them for prayer. And circumstances and situations that arise, they all need incredible prayer over there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear the, the positive impression of that pastor of the seeing the church that is was supporting the ministry in his context. Well, we've talked about some of the theory of this, uh, Simon, but I wonder if you could share with us a story of a church where you have seen a vision trip really accomplish great things that were intended, or maybe not intended, but the Lord brought out of it where there's good fruit. I can think of four or five churches that have actually come alongside a ministry overseas and seen the development of this mature, mm-hmm. you know, and, and grow. And it's been an exciting element to see. Um, for example, with uh, this particular ministry I'm talking about in, in Ethiopia, we now have six churches who have committed and now have been supporting and praying and coming and visiting for the last four years, five years, growing that ministry, the, the, the strength and the, the, the support from both sides is, uh, has been a real blessing to see. And I, you can see from the congregation that they've not necessarily fallen in love with, <clears throat> with that ministry, but support it in prayer with everything mm-hmm. that they have. And when, when these, uh, the, they, we do a deputation, uh, they're just accepted back into their houses and homes as if they're just part of the, part of the congregation. Well, Simon, as we begin to wrap up here, I want to imagine that we have assembled in front of us the audience of this podcast, and they are comprised of pastors and missions committees and people interested in missions. If you could speak to that group about vision trips, whether they should do it or not, what would you want to say to that group? I would say, open up your hearts to do a vision trip. Firstly, I think you need to really search the DNA of the church and look at the options there. Are you looking at uh, unreached people groups? Are you looking at resettlement of, of families? What are you looking for? What is the main thrust of your church? And then look for an area that that is so relevant 
then pursue that, take a trip, explore the possibilities, see how the relationship can be grown, then come back and start working on that. That, that to me is the most important. That's good. Now, I'm going to press you for one specific question here. How would they get started? What's the first step they should take? I mean, I'm absolutely open to if any of the anybody listening would love to contact me, I would really treasure some time with them to get together to share with them the opportunities we have. And also, like I, I'm taking another team over to Ethiopia in April, then I'm planning to do another one to Uganda and Ethiopia in November. So all those opportunities are there. I'd love to speak to them to find out where their heart's passion is. They believe their churches and that we can see if we can fit them into that area. Mm -hmm. That's good. I've appreciated in my meeting, Simon, his commitment to be discerning with the church and not to come with an agenda already, but he's a listener and his goal is to serve churches as pastors, missions committees, other leaders discern the Lord's direction for that church. Not an overbearing guy. Simon, if someone would like to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Absolutely. Now, please, if they could use my email, which is simon.marable at sim.org, or my phone number, cell phone is 416-520-7157. And I'd love to spend the time getting a coffee, getting to know them before we sort of proceed from there. Well, Simon, this has been a great starter conversation. I know there's lots more to explore, but thank you for helping us unpack these ideas in a preliminary way. We appreciate very much you spending time with our audience to help us discover and understand vision trips. Bless you for what you're doing as well, because I know the impact that you are having for the gospel is, is fantastic. I thank you for that. Thank you. Lord bless you, brother. You too. Well, that concludes our conversation today with Simon. Thanks again for joining us. And remember, you can find show notes, including a couple of links to other episodes that we mentioned during this episode that are relevant to this topic. All of that is on our website at globalmissionspodcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to subscribe. As of this recording, we have over 700 subscribers. That number is growing every week, and we really appreciate your help in spreading the word. As our regular listeners know, we are always glad to hear from you with suggested topics or interviews that you'd like us to consider. That's all for today. The Global Missions Podcast is produced by the Jaffrey Center for Global Initiatives and Send International of Canada in collaboration with other like-minded agencies. On behalf of our team, thanks for listening. We invite you to join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore this grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.